Yes. They have the uh, Google Maps card. Yeah. Uh, they have the reference card in the back. Okay. Great. Excellent. Um, okay, so I guess we're going to start uh, by looking at R, and I should say that, you know, this, I mean, I want this workshop to be uh, very easy for you guys, so if you've got any questions or anything, any concerns, you know, you can stop me anytime, if there's something that's not clear, uh, I'll explain it again, uh, and we're going to play with R uh, as we go along, so we're going to make sure first that R is installed and is running on your machine, and we can do all of the things before, uh, well, before we move on. Um, so, can you make sure that R is, is started and you have it in front of you, everything's working or seem to be working? If it's not, just raise your hand. Okay. Nina, can you jump on it? Anyone else needs help? Okay, so what we're going to, uh, I'm first going to go through R, and uh, as I said, it's going to be fairly basic. So for those who really know R and you know these basics, you know, just bear with me. We're going to move on to some more interesting stuff. If you don't know R and you feel lost, you know, I mean, this is, it's always very difficult to teach something that you know very well because maybe what seemed really basic to me might, might not be that basic to you. So. If you feel I'm moving too fast, you know, just tell me and, and we can make sure that uh, you're on board. Any questions so far? No? Okay, so <clears throat> I'm going to start a little bit and uh, I'm sure she'll catch up. So the first thing you can, you, you can see is that R is just a calculator, okay? So often, in fact, you know, when I have to do simple calculations on my machine, you know, I'm looking for some things, I just launch R and I use R as my calculator. So what we're going to do, we're going to go and launch R and we're going to play a little bit uh, with the, the few comments. So I should say that in, in the, uh, the folder that you have, probably it's a good thing that you put it somewhere you can access it, maybe on your desktop, whatever. In that folder you have the, the slides and you also have uh, a file called uh, script.r maybe or something like that where there's all the R comments in it. So you can either copy and paste from the slides or you can copy and paste, probably that's better, from the R file that's in the folder. Uh, so you, you probably downloaded a folder. No, I, I don't actually. I don't know. Michelle, did you put the, the folder online? And Okay. Is that, do you know if, if people have downloaded that already or should we do it now? Or? Okay. Can you tell me where it is? Behind me. Okay. Good, good. Okay, so we're going to go right here and we're going to download all the files. Yes. What a show. Do I have one? Or? Yes, you do. <laughs> Probably send it to me. You can just use mine, it's fine. Okay, good. So, what we're going to do is that we're going to download, we're, we're going to do that right away. There are three data sets we're going to use. The first one is a full cytometry data set, the second one is a gene expression data set, and the other one is a time series uh, expression data set. So we're going to download these three data sets along with the script. Okay, and this is where we're going to have all the comments for, uh, for R that we're going to use today and tomorrow. So actually we're going to do save as. So just put it on your desktop. It's probably the easiest place so that you know, you're going to be able to access all the files very easily.
this is going to be the hardest part of the workshop. Once this is done, it's going to be super easy. Okay, so we just go and download all the files. Are you good? Is that okay? Yeah, what does he say? So, if you cannot open the file, what you should do is launch R and in R, so I don't have Windows, so it's probably going to be very different from you guys, but you can go in into a file open and you're going to open the, the script.r and uh, R is going to know that it's uh, an R file, so that should be okay. And if you have problems, just raise your hand. Yes. Say that again. If you just get the screen for the URL, that's the oh, file. Yeah, but I don't. Yeah, but I don't want to. I want to copy and paste some things. So. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So you should be able to open a file like this. And it comes in with all the R commands we're going to use for today. Is that okay for everyone? Okay, and you should have your R console open as well, and R is running here. And don't pay attention to the version number, so I have 2.10, because uh, we, always, we always need the, the uh, latest version for what we do, but you should have 2.9, which is fine. Okay, for everyone, if it's not, just raise your hand. Okay, so we're going to try the first thing. So, as I say, you know, R is just a calculator, so we can just use it as such. So, if you want to do 2 plus 2, you can... Just copy and paste that. And of course, you know, it's going to tell you it's four. You can actually play with it, do some other things. It works just fine. There's also lots of mathematical functions that I built into R, like the exponential. OK. Uh, R also has some built-in variables, like pi, for example. You know, this, you often use pi in, in, in mathematics and statistics, so it's nice to have a variable that already contains the value of pi. So this is known to R. You know, if you tap pi, it will be 3.14. Uh, there's also the sine and cosine functions. You know, so it's really just like a regular calculator that you've used uh, before, and you're probably going to use it in the future again. Is this okay for everyone, this part? Told you it was going to be really easy. Yes.
you know, if something's not working for you, just let us know. I mean, there's no shame. Uh, you know. It's hard to, to look, to know when one out of 34 people is not. So for, for the cast point, are you going to practice Oh, you can. So, yeah, I didn't do that. We can try. They do. So, of course. So someone just asked, you know, in R, is, you know, can you use parentheses and brackets or whatever in, in the uh, calculator? So of course you can. So if you want to do uh, two plus, so you know that there's an order that, you know, the, the multiplication is always going to be done before the addition and so forth. So if you do that, let's say uh, two plus three times uh, four, it's going to be 14, right? But if you want to do two plus four first, then of course you're going to put some parentheses and therefore it's going to do 2 plus 4 and then multiply that by 3. Okay, so you can use parentheses if you want to. Just like a regular calculator. Just like you would do it, you know, if you were to do that on a piece of paper. Okay, so we're going to wait a couple more minutes. So the next thing we're going to see is that in all, often you don't really know what you're looking for or you, or you know you want to do something like you want to use the sine function or the cosine function, but you don't actually know the exact R common or how to use it, what are the arguments of that function. Okay, so the first thing you're going to look for is for help. Okay, and there's a really nice built-in help in R. You know, so it's very, very uh, um, straightforward to find information about something you don't know. <laughs> And for me, every day I use the, the help comment because you cannot remember everything and how to use all of the built-in functions. So the way you can do that okay, is just by typing help and the name of the comment or, or the variable or the function you want to know more about. Okay, you can either do help and parentheses with the name of the function variable you're looking for, or you can also do question mark, which is the same thing. So if we go back in R, we can do help x, okay? And that's going to tell me everything about the exponential and the log and how to use them, okay? And the good thing as well is that it's gonna give me a couple of examples at the end. So if you scroll down towards the end, there's gonna be a few examples. And typically, the examples are probably the best place uh, you want to look at when you don't really know how to use something because you're going to understand right away how to use it. Okay, so here there's an example log of x of 3, and of course, you know, that's going to be 3. So that's nice, and we can also type, uh, you know, question mark if we want. That's going to give us the exact same thing. Okay, so it's kind of a shortcut for help. You can do the same thing with sign. Great. Okay, but let's say I want to, uh, I don't know, maybe you want to uh, type something, uh, uh, let's say, let's say we wanted to look for the sine function, but we didn't read on what it was, so we, went, we would type, uh, or exponential. Okay, sometimes you will... If you type a word, you might not really find something for it, right? Because this might not be the actual R command that you need. That you need. So the other thing that you, you can do is that, so I think I have an example uh, in here. The thing you can do is use help.search. So help.search will actually search for a keyword or something that might not be exactly in our function or in our variable or in our comment. But it will find all, it will actually try to look for all the help it can find that contains that keyword. Okay? So typically this is actually easier to use that if you're looking for something you're unsure is actually an R function or an R variable. Okay? So if you were just used to type trigonometry and question mark, you know, there's nothing about it, right? Because there's no R functions or R uh, variables. But if you do help that search, you will try to search something about it. Okay? And it's going to take a little bit longer because it's going to try to look for a topic that actually contains that. And here it found one, and you can just click on that, and bang, you've got, oh, here's this a cosine function, there's the sine function, there's the tangent, okay, and so forth. 
Is that sort of clear how to use that? So this is something that you're probably going to use a lot and that you want to make sure you understand how to use it. Okay, so one of the questions here is why did I put quotes here but not before, for example, right, when we do help? It's because here we don't really know what we're looking for. So it's like a keyword, it's not really an R comment. So when you put here uh, help X, you're telling R that look for a comment or variable that's exactly that name. Okay. Here it's going to say, well, try to look for a topic that contains that keyword. Okay, so something that you you, you don't really know something, you want to know something about, you know, you just type that keyword. You know, it could be plot or, uh, you know, matrix, whatever, keyword that you want to know something about. Okay, so far so good for everyone? So a calculator is very nice and you can, you know, just type a couple of comments and, uh, and, and, and do some very basic calculation. But even on a very simple calculator, you know, just like a, a tiny pocket calculator, you need a way to store intermediate results, right? Often you're going to try to put a couple of things in memory so that you can reuse it later or you can make it easier to uh, compute something. So we need a way to store uh, variables in memory. And this is done via the assignment. We're going to create some variable that are going to contain some value. And the assignment in R is done with some via uh, that command, which is kind of like a left arrow. So we're going to go back in the script. And this is an assignment. Okay, so we're, we're saying create a variable x and put the value 2 in x. The second one here says create a variable y and put the value 2 in y and then we can just do x plus y and r is going to know that what we want to do is 2 plus 2 because x contains 2, y contains 2 therefore we're doing 2 plus 2. So let's try that. So let's first try to copy and paste that one. Okay, so x is in memory now so if I type x it's going to know that its value is 2. So we can do the same thing for y. And of course, once a, create, a, a variable is created, you can change its value if you want. You can say, oh no, I didn't want two, I want three. So you can do that. No, one, once you have overwritten value, you cannot go back to the previous one. It's over. Okay, so you need to be careful when you store intermediate results. You have to reassign. So if you want to say, no, it was two, you have to redo that. Okay. So one thing that you're gonna, you know, maybe not right away, but uh, after you know a little bit uh, more about R, you're gonna feel more confident on how to use it, and therefore you're gonna start writing a little bit of code and things, and you're gonna create more variables and more intermediate uh, uh, variables. So you're gonna have lots of variables in your code, possibly, and so you might say x, y, z, a, b, whatever. You're going to have lots of variables. And then you're going to say, oh, what is that variable used for? I don't even remember. So it's very, it's typically a good idea to give explicit names to your variable, right? So try to avoid the uh, single letter variable because it's hard to know what they, they are for and what they mean. So try to use maybe longer variable names. And one way to do that is to use an explicit name. So your favorite variable and maybe you can separate the world with capital or dots or something like that. Is that okay for everyone? Okay. Are we okay in the back, Michelle? Sort of. Okay. Okay, so of course here we, we've looked at creating variables. Uh, single numbers and calculation but you all know that you know and we've heard that this morning is that when we want to do statistics and bioinformatics we're gonna have a lot more than just one data point right so we need to be able to store things that contain just more, one more um, more than just one number okay so we need a way to store uh, data uh, data sets and so forth and we can do that via maybe vectors sequences and lists and we're gonna go through these things so it's basically trying to use 
uh, or as a way to uh, work on data directly, data set directly. So one way you can do that when you've got you know lots of elements, you can just concatenate these elements using the C function. Okay, and we're going to through, go through the example. So here's the example here. So I want to create a variable that contains several numbers. Okay, so what I'm doing is just uh, concatenating these numbers using the C. So C for concatenate. And then you open the parenthesis and you put all the numbers separated by a comma and then you close that parenthesis. Okay? So here we are just creating a vector or a list of numbers. Okay, we do that and if we want to look at it, you're gonna see that it contains several numbers in it. Of course it's a vector. You know, maybe you want to uh, look at just one of the specific numbers in that list, maybe the first one, we can directly assess, access that number using the brackets in here saying, access the first element of that vector, we just copy and paste that, and that's going to give you the first number. If you want the second, you use that, and so forth. So doing what we're doing now, it's called indexing. So we can index a vector, and we're going to learn more a little bit about indexing in a couple of slides. Is that okay for everyone? Indexing means you want to you want to access a specific element of your vector. Okay, so we're just indexing that element, and we're going to learn more about indexing. There's a lot of ways you can index things, and this is a, a a good thing about R and um, I would say programming languages in general. Okay, so let's say now we want to create another vector. It's called height. Okay. And let's say we want to compute something that involves the height and the weight. And here's just the, uh, the uh, body mass index. Okay, that we define at the weight divided by the height squared. And we can do that directly on the vector. So we can do operation on all the numbers at once. What this is going to do is that for each element of the vector, you're going to do the exact same operation. Okay, so we're going to go through the example and you're going to understand that very easily. So we've got the, the uh, weight vector, the height vector, and we're creating the body mass index uh, uh, variable or vector by just dividing the weight, dividing by the height squared. So if we type that, it's going to be this. And in fact, you can see that this, what this comment is doing is that it's working on vectors directly, and it's going to say, OK, for each element of that vector, and each element of that vector, I'm going to do the weight divided by the height square. So we could do that by hand manually, right? We could just do, let's try to take the first element, which is 60, and divide it by the first element of height squared. And that's going to give you the same thing here. You could do for the second element. We we're indexing because I want to show you that when you work on the vectors directly, it's the same thing as just working on each element individually. Okay, And that's a great way because you don't have to do it by hand. R is just going to work on the vector directly and is going to do that by just, if you want, looping over all the elements of the vector and doing the exact same calculation. Okay, And so this is what we call vectorized operation. Okay. That is, you're going to do an operation on the list, and it's going to do the same operation on all the elements of that list. Okay? And that's very important, because when we deal with statistics or bioinformatics, we get lots of data, and we're certainly not going to do it by hand or try to write comment for each of the data point in the data set. Right? We want to do things that are easy to use, that are fast, and are going to work on the whole data set at once. Is this sort of clear what we mean here by uh, it's vectorized? It's going to do the same operation on each element of the vector? If it's not clear, just raise your hand. If you know if there's something that you want to know, you want to ask a question, do it. There's no stupid question, really. So does this assume that your vectors are ordered? No, uh, no. This well, it's it's assuming that each element. First of all, it's assuming that the vectors are the same size. 
because if, if they don't, what do you mean by doing that operation, right? And that you want to do, they are all, or they are, there's a pairing between the element of the vector. So each weight corresponds to the height in the other vector. So if you've got patients, for example, the first uh, element of the weight is from patient one, the first element in the height is from patient one, patient two, and so forth. So ordered in that way, yes. Same number of elements, yes. Yeah, in fact, if they're not the same, R is sort of clever about it. Well, clever, yes and no. Because what it will do is, is we'll take the shorter vector and it will do that operation on the, the, the shortest, shortest length of the two vectors. Uh, but you need to be a little bit careful about, about what you want to do. Is it more Well, we can try. Why don't we try that? Um, you know what, actually, well, let's try now. So we're going to take the height, okay, and we're going to just remove the last element, for example, okay. And let's try to do the same thing again. So it's going to give you a warning here to tell you that they don't have the same length, but it's still going to do the calculation. And in fact, if you look at BMI, you're going to get something. So now one thing that you might say is that, well, it's weird because even though there's only five elements in the height, it's still doing the, the it's still giving me a number for the last one, okay? What R does is that when there's one of the vector that's shorter than the other, it's going to recycle the elements. So let's say here we do the operation for the six element. We did not have a height in here because we removed it for the six, uh, let's say, patient. What it's going to do is it's going to say, okay, I need one more element, so it's going to go back and take the first one. Okay, so it's going to recycle the elements. Uh, in any case, you don't have to worry too much about it because you do get the warning, you know you did something wrong, so you know that it's not valid and you should be careful about it. Well, I know because I know it all works. Typically, no, in the warning you wouldn't know. You, you just have to know how, how it works. So it, it just recycles. So if, you, if, if you've got two lists, one that has 10 elements, the other one has five, it needs more. So, so yeah, it's going to recycle them. So it's, that's what I said about, you know, R is clever in a good and bad way. It's because it's still going to give you a result, but it's not very meaningful. Good, good question. So, can we know the length of a vector? So it's something probably I should have put here, but of course we can just type length of the vector, okay? And that's going to tell us the length of it. Okay, so here it's six. Okay, one thing, so when you ask me a question, you know, can, is there something to know the length of the vector? Before you ask that question, try to find it on your own using the question mark, right? So it would be a, sort of a good test and you can see if you can actually learn information even though you didn't know about it. So here, let's say we did not know about that, so we could just type, you know, the easiest way to do is to type length. In fact, here it is the name of the function. But if we did not know that, we could just do help that search and the name of what we wanted, okay? And then it will look for a lot of things. So this is something that maybe would be interesting when you do have that search, is that it, it might actually return a lot of, of possible uh, answers for you. But one of them, some of them are not going to be relevant. And the way it's going to sort these answers is that you're going to have a topic, you're going to have in which package it, it comes from, and you're going to have a description. Many of the packages, so here on my machine I have lots of packages installed. Probably on yours you don't have that many packages. Maybe you don't have any packages installed besides the, the, the base distribution. So typically what you would look for is first in the base distribution here, right? Because this is what you care about. And here you can see that there's length, and this is what we were looking for. So we'll go back to that later on. So if your length function doesn't exist when in your base distribution, what do you do? Well, so here let's say it did not... Well, in that case, it does exist. But if we did not know, we could just do help that search and the name of what we're looking for, okay? And if it did not exist, maybe you would find something else that was related to length that would have a very similar name and you would see it, it would come up here, 
Okay, so here it's not a very good example, but the uh, trigonometry example I've, I've used before, you could see that there was no function for trigonometry, but we still found what we were looking for, which is sine and cosine. Because the sine phase is Doesn't have length. No. If you do question mark length, you don't get anything. And if I do length as a error, could not find function length. <laughs> good, good. You guys are learning. That's very good. I do that all the time too. So, okay. So we we just learned how to concatenate elements with the C function. Uh, and we can do vec uh, vectorized operation, that is we can just divide a vector by another vector and it's going to do the element wise uh, division. Okay, one thing that we should, uh, you should know and we're going to come back to that later is that vector based operations are very fast. Okay, and there's other ways to actually do th these operations by doing loops and things. We're going to talk a little bit about that, but typically it's going to be slower. Okay, so here's an, an a uh, little exercise for you. So try to find another way to create a vector. Okay, so let's say you want to create a vector. What would you do? Not using C or concatenate. If you know how to do it, don't say anything. But let's say you want to create a vector. What would you do? Okay, go for it. Question mark vector, right? We're trying to look for a way to create a vector, so let's try to ask the help for vector. Okay, so we can try to do that. Question mark vector. So here vector, there's a function called vector that produces a vector of the given length and mode. Okay, well, this might be a bit uh, abstract, so what we're going to do is that we're going to go and scroll down to the example over here. So if we, if we look in the example, we do look and, and find the C function. And there are some other things, but it's not really related to what we wanted to do, right? So now we type vector, we see C also C. So maybe this is more related to what we want to do. So we're going to click on this because we know that this is the sort of things that we were looking for. So we t click on the C. And that's going to give us some more information on um, perhaps how to create vectors. And right away, you can see that maybe I didn't really think of that example because I don't really see what I was looking for. So this is, but it's a, it's a good example for something else, in fact. Um, often, you're going to try to look for things on R using the question mark or even help that search. So maybe let's try help that search because here it's it's a way to create vector, but it's not really what I was looking for because it's it's more uh, abstract than than uh, the other thing I was looking for. So we're going to do help that search vector to try to see what we find here. So there's the C, okay, which allows us to do the concatenate. 
And we're gonna go down, we're gonna go down a little bit more. Yes? Uh, because because uh, you're using Windows, so maybe you have a different window, or uh, it might not look exactly the same. I don't. I do not know. Let me see. What does it do if you like out that search? So this is a great commercial for uh, you should get a Mac. Eh? <laughs> no, <laughs> no, it's just a different GUI on Windows, so maybe it's not clickable. Uh, so for Christmas, you can just order a Mac, and it will be clickable. Uh, in the meantime, you can just uh, look at the, the specific comment and and uh, so when you get a topic, so let's say. Uh, so let's say here's this rep, right? So you would see it. Maybe it's not clickable, but you would see it. So what you can do when you have that, um, how does it call it? When once you have the R topic, you can do question mark rep. Okay. Once you know what it is, you can just do question mark rep, and you will get the help for it. Okay. So maybe it's not clickable for you guys, but you should be able to just get the name and do question mark what you're looking for, which will be it would do the exact same thing. We'll talk about packages soon, okay? But like this, the the when you see it, so in your case, it should be there should be in the name of the package, which is base, and then you have rep after it, right? Probably looks like that, which tells you that rep is a function that's part of the base distribution of the core distribution of R. It's not very clear. We'll talk about packages. Is that okay for everyone how to go at help on rep? Okay, so now it says that um, so rep can replicate the value in X and it's a generic function basically to create vectors. So if we go to the help right away, we say okay, here you do rep one, two, four. Uh, let's do actually something slightly easier. So let's look at the arguments. So the first one, it's a vector. So you can replicate a vector. It can just be a number. And the second argument is uh, the number of times you want to replicate that. So let's just go in R, sorry. When you do question mark rep, So when you do, let me try again. If you do question mark rep like that, you get a well, but you would get a window. So close that one and redo it. Close that window and uh, type question mark. You get it? Yes. Good. So if you uh, type question mark rep and you still have the old window from vector, just close that window and do it again. It will open a new window with rep in it. Um, okay, so let's go back to this. So let's try to play with it so we can do rep. So we want to replicate two and ten times. Okay, and that's going to create a vector of length 2 and it's going to just replicate uh, 2 10 times. 
Okay, so we're going to see more ways to create vectors later on. So this is just a little exercise to uh, use help and try to find something. So while we talk about that, you're going to see that very often you're going to look for something or common, and it can be very easy to get lost in the help files of R because there's a lot of functions sometimes, you know, if you type a key keyword, it's not really going to give you what you want. And I'm, you know, I'm going to be honest with you, probably most of the time I look for something or help or an R topic, the best way to find it is via Google. Okay. So you just type create a vector R in Google and it's probably going to give you better answers than what you would look by using the help. <laughs> That's right, yeah. They get, you know, they get paid enough that they can actually do these sorts of things. <laughs> yeah. Uh, whereas the people who actually work on R are probably too poor to uh, spend a lot of time on creating nice uh, manual pages. Okay, so another thing that uh, we didn't talk about is that C can be used to concatenate not only vectors, but string and, and, and letters, whatever you want. So we're going to see that through a couple of examples. So just to summarize vectors, we've got three ways of vectors. One we've seen, which is a numeric, it's just going to be a list of numbers. Another one that's going to be logical, it's going to be a list of what we call Boolean variables, true or false. We're going to see an example of that. And we're going to have vectors of type characters, just going to be a list of strings. So let's go see a couple of examples. Okay, so here we create the vector which is just numeric and copy and paste that. And if we type X, it's just uh, three numbers. Now we want to create a vector of logical, so the first element is true then it's true, then it's false, then it's true. These types of variable are called booleans. It could be either true or false, or sometimes it's coded as zero or one, and it's very helpful when you're trying to make uh, statistical decisions or something to have search variables. Okay. And another one is just putting a bunch of string of characters together Okay, and it's going to see that it's just a vector, but each element of the vector is a word. And again, there are vectors, so we can index, so we can access any of the element in the same way as before. So if we want the third element of the x vector, then it's going to be name. Okay, if we want the fifth element, it's going to be Francis. Okay. So here it's here it's a vector. So it's just we concatenate a bunch of or we put together a bunch of, of strings or in this case they are just words and we put them into a vector so that the first element is the word hello, the second one is mine, then third my name, is and so forth. And we can access any of these elements. Is that clear for everyone? Why do you need uh, quotation marks? Good question. So if you don't, I would think that you're trying to manipulate a variable. So you need to make a difference between a string and a variable for R. So let's go back in R. If you type name, it's going to say error because object name is not found. If we do name two, okay, I create a variable that's called name, contains the value two then I can print that variable, it's two, okay? But then if you don't put quotes around name, how it's gonna know that you wanna use the word name or the variable name, okay? So you, make, you need to make a distinction between the two. So putting the quote is saying, I just wanna use that as a string, that's name, and not the variable name. So it's different from the variable, okay? So if we were to use, in fact, you could do that here. Okay, let's try to do that, we replace 
uh, the word name by name, what is that going to do? It's going to use the variable. Okay. So when you concatenate things that have different types, such as numbers and characters, the default will be to turn everything as characters or as strings. So in that case, name was just a numeric value too, but because you wanted to concatenate with other strings, it says, okay, let's convert that into a string. You can only have vectors of the same kind, either all strings, all characters, all boolean. Say that again? You can. So we'll, we'll see that. But um, So here we've got x. The length of x is 5, right? So what you could do, for example, is to do, okay, let's do x, but I want x and I want to add another number to it, 12. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to take x, concatenate 12 to it, okay, and maybe I'm going to rename that and call it y, and this is going to be y, okay. So with the concatenate, you can always add things to a vector already, okay. Concatenate can not only concatenate numbers and strings together, but also vectors. Can you pull more than one uh, object out instead of? We'll see that, yes. The answer is yes, which is why it's really nice, but we'll see it. Okay. Um, okay, a little exercise for you. Create a vector with the following elements 1, 3, 10, and minus 1, and call that vector x. So you're going to create a vector x, and I want the vector x to contain 1, 3, 10, and minus 1. Okay. And if you don't manage to do that, there's no break for you. So of course the answer is in the file, but let's try to do it on your own. Okay, so we want to create a vector. We want to name it x. So we start with x in the assignment, so the left arrow like that. We want to concatenate numbers, so we're going to start with the C. Okay, and I can't remember what numbers I said. I said, uh, what is it? 1, 3, 10, minus 1. So 1, 3, 10, and minus 1. <coughs> Okay, so we've created that vector with 1, 3, 10, minus 1. Here's x. Now we want to take the square root of x. This is what I ask you next. Say, so take the square root of x. Do you think you're going to have some problems if you take the square root of x? Yes. Why? Because of the minus 1. Right? Because of the minus 1. And we cannot take the square root of negative uh, numbers. But let's try anyway. Yeah, because R is clever, but as I said, you know, it's clever enough to do things even if sometimes you shouldn't. But it's going to give you a warning. Okay, so it says, oh, warning, the last number I couldn't take the square root, so I'm going to put that weird sample instead uh, of uh, the result, which is n a n, which means not a number. Okay, it's just because the square root of a negative number does not exist, so R is going to tell you, well, this is not a number. It's nice because it's still, it's still going to do it and deal with it, and you don't have to worry too much about it. It gives you the warning, but life goes on. We're going to do the same thing with the log of x. Okay? Actually, I wanted to do log of 1 plus x. Okay, so we want to take the log of 1 plus x. We do that, and this is what we get. Once again, everything's fine except for the last number because 1 plus minus 1 is 0 and the log of 0 is not defined, right? But the limit is actually minus infinity. So here, uh, R can deal with that as well and for infinity it's going to use inf. 
Okay, so here are two things that we can see in our radius that when you don't have something that you shouldn't do and doesn't give you a number, it gives you a warning, NAN, and it deals with the infinity cases. So that's kind of nice. Okay? So we've seen the NAN symbol. We've seen coffee break? No, no break. Huh? Uh, okay, let's finish this line and then we'll take a break. Um, so we've seen the uh, not a number symbol, we've seen the infinity minus infinity, but um, in, in uh, statistics or in any sort of uh, uh, science um, field where you deal with data, it's very common to have missing values, right? So you're going to do a clinical trial and you know the, the patient is going to uh, come and you're going to take some blood samples, but one day the patient doesn't show up, well, what do you do? You're, gonna, you're not going to stop the trial, right? So what you're going to do is just going to mark missing value, right? You're going to say, well, here it didn't come, so I couldn't take the, uh, the sample. So you need a way to deal with missing value. And you need a way to tell R that there is a missing value. And the way to do that is just to code the missing value by NA. And what's nice about R is that depending on the context, it will actually provide different ways to deal with missing values. So here's the example, and we're going to look at that right after the break.